What's up, what's up everybody? It's almost the end of RTA Season 9, so I thought today, let's take a look back at the top 10 highest win rate units in RTA Season 9. So there's a couple different speculations. Also, I got a thank you to uh, Make It A Bud, Hells Archer, and Thompson for giving me a little bit of input on the, I mean, the list is already, it's mathematical data, so the list is, the list is what it is, but they gave a little bit of input, which will show after the, uh, after the units on, like, why it's so OP and how to counter it. So, uh, again, th thank you to those. I'll leave some links to their Twitch pages in the description below, but here is the conditions for when we're making this list, or when we're, because the, the, the actual data from it is based on the information from rtapix.info, I think is the, um, the website, and it just, uh, it just collects all the data from all the RTA matches uh, over the season. So, Guardian or above, nothing below. We're not looking for the highest win rate units in Fighter 3. I'm sorry, we're not looking for... We're looking for Guardian or above, used in at least 500 plus matches. If it's only used in one match and it win and it won, it's got 100% win rate. It, it, that's... No, no, we're not... That doesn't count. That doesn't count. That doesn't count. Um, there's a few things skewing the data, in my opinion. If high-level pay-to-win players have fun, light, dark toys, they're most likely to use them just because they want to play with the shinies, and they probably have some of their best, uh, their best runes. Uh, light, dark, nat fives are harder to... Yeah, it, there's a lot of light, dark, nat fives on this list. Uh, harder to counter since less people have them, and less used to battling against them. And also, things like Hathor, Friend, Vanessa, etc. might have more overall wins than some of the light dark nat fives but the percentage of wins just wasn't as high it's just they might be like oh, they got 10,000 wins this season whereas like something like yen hong got like 3,000 but the yen hong percentage of wins is higher so anyway without further without further ado let's uh let's get into number 10 Number 10, Tian Lang. I was legitimately surprised they were number 10. I feel like Tian Lang is like better than number 10, but this is based on the win percentage. Uh, why is he... I mean, he's you know why he's OP. Counters, Vert Heal, Diana, Ragdoll, and other attack age boosters, plus strip stun defense break, and uh, attack age pushback now, too. Counters... I put counters Gany, Triton, Hathor. Make it a butt had some choice words to correct my wrongness on that. Uh, here's some thoughts from Hell's Archer. Uh, don't go for turn cycling if possible, but a lot of people like to bring Tian Lang at the end, so you don't know that they're bringing the Tian Lang until the very end. It's like, oh, great! Uh, CC him, Vert is not bad against him, he actually says, since it's still some attack age. So, Tian Lang counters the Vert, but Vert also still brings a lot of attack age regardless. Uh, as long as Tian Lang is controlled, he can't do much heavy damage as well as killing him, killing him ASAP normally renders the team or kills their only defense break. I mean, like, all these Nat 5s, though, like, in in one way, though, like, outspeed nuke, right? In in one way, that's really counter to, like, all these different Light Dark Nat 5s, is, like, if you kill them before they go too crazy, then, of course, it's not as dangerous if you kill them first. So, uh, things, to, things to note. Um, Make It A Butt had some things to say. OP because the ca uh, counters to the units you mentioned, um... And Ajir, Okinos, Oracles, Cleaves, he's countering all these different things. Uh, Helena, Water Monkeys, and more. This counters everything. Um, strip Stun is OP and Defense Break on Skill 1's counters. Don't bring Attack Age boosting units. I mean, everyone's got the thing, don't bring Attack Age boosting. <sighs> Bagel with his Diana that he loves to pick. I love to pick Diana. <laughs> you guys know, you guys know, yeah. Uh, so I have to kind of ban the Tian Lang <laughs> in that situation. God, see, but then when they bring the Tian Lang and the Ragdoll, I'm like, can I ban them both? I can't ban them both. Um, so he, yeah, he said uh, Gany, Hathor, Triton are really considered counters because they apply to anything. He's like, they counter, Gany, Hathor, Triton is anything counter, right? Not just the Tian Lang. So it's not really a direct Tian Lang counter. Number nine, I was surprised that this guy's number nine, because honestly, I... I felt like Tian Lang, I'm like, looking at Tian Lang, I'm like, number 10? Zeratu is higher? Uh, why? Self-buffing immunity, attack power, nuke that counters Trion and Garo. You're really not seeing too many, uh, too much Garo now, nowadays, because Ajir, Water Monkey, Fire Lich, so many people have so many things that just naturally, uh, counter Garo. So you don't really see that too much. Um, you don't really see too, again, for the same reason, you don't really see Trion as much as she was picked in previous seasons. Uh, counters control and outspeed new. That's kind of the counter to a lot of the units on this list. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, so let's see what make it a bud thought. 
OP is about right. Counters, that's about, he had really not too much uh, to disagree with on that one. Um, Health Archer said it can kill turn one or op or um, CC him into nuking him. Fran Mo Long damage, then go from there. So Fran Mo Long. Uh, it's interesting to say like a couple of these, uh, a couple of them like the uh, the Mo Long, even though we don't see him as much this season. Uh, Mo Long's still a pretty valid pick. Um, just because of his big burst damage, that's why. Because he his, se his second skill is like not as OP as it used to be, but his big burst damage is why he's a uh, kind of a more valid pick into a lot of these different units. Um, but yeah, Fran Mo Long, uh, and f following up, Fran attack power buff, I think is what he meant. The Mo Long with a big nuke, and then Fran attack power buff into another like and just enough damage to kill the rest of him uh, should uh, should finish the job. Number eight on the list is Yen Hong. I feel like she should be number four. Like, I really, I feel like she should be in my heart. I, I was like really surprised to see that she was the, the, that low on this list. Um, and this is not, this is not like a light dark only list. It just happens to be like a lot of these units with the highest win percentages are light darks. Uh, again, there's no, there's not a light dark stipulation where it's like, you're, this is an only light dark list. It's like, that's just how this list happened to turn out. Um, so why? She's good at turn cycling, really good at turn cycling skill 2, turn cycling skill 3, really efficient at turn cycling. Turn cycling is so key in RTA. I think a lot of players that are trying to climb, trying to climb, trying to climb, don't realize how good turn cycling is. Um, think about a lot of the big RTA units. They steal turns, they increase attack ages, uh, big, big, uh, decrease also, decrease attack ages and, uh, stop opponents from getting turns like deny turns from the opponents if you think it's if you look at a lot of the best units just overall even even three stars and four stars and stuff like that like you see like oh the, all these units do something like that so right turn cycling sh uh, skill to strip nuke attack age boost glancing is decent versus vertiheal diana hathor they're usually built with a lot of crit but it's at least decent uh little help uh, counter CC bombs interrupt attack age decrease. I feel like uh, a lot of people were agreed that the attack age decrease is kind of the best way to deal with uh, Yen Hong's insanity. Uh, Hell's Archer's thoughts turn cycle focus her down. Uh, Mo Long snipe into her with damage to instant zero her heavy damage units to where she can't overheal because she is. It's not a full. It's a full attack age increase. It's not a full heal though. So she's not like it's a, a lot of times it will be like a full heal, but it's not necessarily always a full heal, uh, based on based on the HP situation. You know what I mean? Uh, and then make it a bud said OP because turn cycling skill two strip nuke attack age boost. More importantly, skill three with full attack age boost on both Yen Hong and another unit and full heal. Uh, skill three is insanely OP. Don't forget fifty five resistance lead. Counters out speed control CC attack age decrease attack age decrease. Uh, that's about it. What this, he said it's his most number one most wanted unit. Number seven. I was not expecting Eleanor to be uh, above Yen Hong to be honest. She kind of does similar to what Yen Hong does. Also, sometimes I fought someone with Eleanor and Yen Hong. It was disgusting. I banned the uh, I banned the Ganymede because I was like, okay, well, I, we gotta ban the, the the Ganymede or the Eleanor. Was not the right choice. It was just ins they took like 20 turns. They were Rakuni. Oh my god! Everyone was attack age boosting everything else. It was ridiculous. It was really. <laughs> I was like, can I get a turn in here somewhere? I should have brought the fire list or something. Damn. Uh, but anyway. Uh, she's a deadly combo. Yeah, I was just I'm surprised that she's a little bit higher than Yahong to be honest. Uh, but it's a crazy combo unit. Deadly combo unit with uh, Ganymede, CC, anything with awesome skill 3. Uh, a lot of times you see her pick with other crazy late dark nat 5s that have uh, great skill 3s that deny turns, turn cycle, etc, etc. Uh, counters banning the unit, she combos with turn interruption, not as good with pass. I said not as good with passive units, uh, but they yelled at me for saying that. Okay, he says uh, correct, why so OP? Counters pretty much correct. Uh, not as good as passive units isn't a counter. He d kind of actually does make a that's not a counter, right? But if you think about it like some passive units Eleanor actually just works fine with So I mean if you think about Eleanor with vertiheal granting a turn instantly to vertiheal like, Okay, that's extra turn cycling uh, same thing with um, like Josephine 
could be really OP with that. It could be really OP with that. I, 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 again, I said um, I fought someone that was using Eleanor with uh, Rakuni as well. And Rakuni is a passive unit, but not as good with passive units. Isn't really a like counter. Damn it, but uh, I stand corrected. And then uh, Hell's Archer, uh, very comp specific, but basically just ban her or the Ganymede. And uh, another thing that I want to add is like things that potentially can cut in. Steel turns uh, are kind of nice. So, um, th I, th I feel like the Fire Lich, I think that whenever I, whenever I fought the player that was using that, I think I didn't have the Fire Lich built, or maybe it was last season or something like that. But yeah, it was, it was pretty crazy. I kind of wish I had that, uh, that Fire Lich right about there. Number six, hot damn. She probably wouldn't have even been on the list last season, but after the buff giving her, uh, she's basic, she's irresistible. She's not basically irresistible. She's irresistible and she silences. Huge, huge, huge. Uh, why? Irresistible debuffs, not hard CC, so can't be protected by Josephine. Speed lead, defense break can go into just nuking everyone, right? Uh, counters, immunity. Does, does shut her down. Uh, control and glancing. Uh, well, I said I said glancing. Uh, here's the thing, though. Uh, Making a buzz that OP gives its irresistible speed lead, heal block, defense break, silences, uh, counter immunity or at speed. Control doesn't really work since Nephthys is a speed lead. Glancing doesn't either. I beg to differ on this glancing, though, because I have Nephthys on my... I don't know if he knows that glancing is actually a counter. Um, but glancing does... Maybe it's a bug. Maybe it shouldn't work. But uh, glancing actually does work against Nephthys. She will not land her stuff if she has a glancing hit sometimes. So maybe he maybe he just didn't experience it uh, firsthand. But yeah, glancing can actually is like it's surprisingly because I I didn't realize until I saw it happen to mine. I was like, oh, that's a counter to her. <laughs> okay, it actually does it actually does work. Uh, the glancing. I even uh, we we saw it in a video too that the glancing and then she she got uh, she didn't land her debuff. Uh, weirdly enough, because it says irresistible, but as soon as glancing, it could be a bug though. It could be a bug. Uh, Hell Sarcher's thoughts reset cleansers outspeed with Okinos. Uh Most times just ban her, then outspeed reset attack age control with a jeer. A lot of things a jeer is so good for a lot of things because if they don't get turns, they can't really do anything OP, right? He strips, he denies them turns by turn cycling and keeps stealing their attack age. So, especially with like a uh, vertigo. Um, yes. Since if skill 3 gets off, it can be GG. Yeah, it really can be GG. I mean, I firsthand use her on the Light Dog server. She is absolutely insane. She just does. She does two thirds of the work for the entire team by herself. She's like, how about we give them all the debuffs and. Have a speed. It's just ridiculous. It's a ridiculous unit. It's so OP. It's so. <laughs> Please don't nerf her. But she was good before. Like they just buffed her, and now she's OP, right? If some things gets a little buff, and was good before, that's how these things work. Anyway. Number five, and my most wanted light dark unit in the entire game. I mean, she doesn't even have the highest win rate of the light dark units in the entire game, but it's, she's my most wanted. I don't know why. I do know why. It's personality. I mean, it's because she's effective. It's just, it's, you know what she does. You know what she does. Will Rune's worst nightmare. Immunity's worst nightmare. She turns cycles very well to get a lot of use out of her uh, skill three because her first skill attack age increases. Her second skill grants her another, uh, another turn as well. So, uh, yeah, everyone's got will runes. Everyone likes to use immunity. She just, she'll, she'll turn the immunity into a stun. Bombs, uh, which is basically ignore defense. I mean, she's great against half the units on this list. She's really great against half the units on this list. She's fantastic. Uh, Gianna's single-handedly, not single-handedly, you have to build, uh, you have to bring other stuff with her. But, oh my god, it's easy. E easy guardian material is Gianna. She's absolutely one of the best units in the game, and I, oh, I don't have a hard uh, as hard of a time fighting against her. Personally, here's um, Tetra, Rakuni, Pater, Amelia, Annabelle, Cleanse, Ban, Bomb, Detonator, uh, Josephine as well. Um, I like so I like to ban this here. I found that for me specifically, um, I found that if I use Tetra and Rakuni and ban the uh, ban the Ciara. I have, I don't have as much of a problem with her. Um, I want her so bad, but I personally don't have as much of a problem fighting against her. Um, 
as as other people do. So I have a decent win rate against that. But that's usually what I do is I usually ban the Ciara because as soon as this if the Ciara goes through, that's kind of the problem on on my end that I found. Uh, she does such, oh my god, she's such a great unit. Uh, Hell Sergeant's thoughts: Outspeed CC Josephine Orion is fast. Uh, j is great if faster due to potentially having op you don't see very many people saying like especially players at such a high level like as H Hell's Archer because all um, Thompson make it a bud and Hell's Archer are all, all uh, super high level RTA super high level RTA players uh, some of the best in the game um, so you don't really see too many saying like oh Orion but Orion because outspeed right uh, is fa great if faster due to potentially having an opening to kill uh, most Giant comps either damage or control damage to moth double speed lead kill control can go for out sustained route with Josephine Rakuni Juno fire monkey I do a similar thing like I said I, I do a similar thing I use Tetra uh, Tetra Rakuni I found to be uh, and and Josephine as well uh, myself so uh, what does make it a bud say it's OP because it stuns with a hundred percent activation rate he really um, he really wanted to push in the importance of that it's a lot of turn cycling as well uh, stuns 100% activation rate, bombs do a lot of damage plus stun, also allows for a lot of turn cycling, rotating into more damage and more stuns. Counters are outspeed and control, cleanse, counter, cleave. Uh, Amelia and Annabelle are not necessarily counters to it, bomb detonator is definitely not needed for Gianna to be good. I find that I, not that that's the only thing that uh, makes her good is the bomb detonator, but I find that if I personally have had good experiences uh, fighting against her, banning the detonator so that's just my personal uh my personal experiences doing that number four and one of the ones that i personally have a much harder time fighting against than gianna is viva Chell. uh why she can basically one shot something with almost no drawback plus immunity and speed based dps skill one um a lot of people also doing a viva Chell and josephine combo which is potentially pretty dangerous um, potentially pretty dangerous. Counters. These are the counters that I would personally use against it, but uh, I found out while doing this video that there's actually better counters, uh, and I'm dumb. So, the things that I would bring into it are revive, self-revive, outs, because you're, you're, gonna, you're gonna get nuked anyway, right? You're basically gonna nuke something. So I'd bring, like, Perna, I would bring Tyrannus, I'd bring Vanessa. Those are things that, that I would personally bring into it. Maybe even a Triana. Outspeed and control, skill reset, silence, water druid. I would also bring possibly a Okeanos. I like to do the Okeanos. But uh, also a Jeer. I might bring a Jeer into this as well. To just try to get her to not get turns if possible. Um, that's another big elite. Thing. Yeah, I really like, even before this season, last season, man. I did a video a long time ago using a Jeer. You guys don't remember that. You guys don't remember Bangle videos a long time ago. Anyway, uh, so here's better ways to counter it, actually. Uh, Made of Bud's thoughts. Uh, self revive like Perna and Water Druid aren't really counters because the Viva Tail only just doesn't target that unit. Makes sense. I still use them as counters. But that's this is a G3 player uh, mindset versus like a G1 player mindset. G1 player mindset is like, I'm just going to be... You know, how, what's the win rate on this unit? 58.2%? Okay. So I'm going to be one of the battles that they use to get that 58.2% win rate is basically that. Uh, Hell Sarger had some really interesting things to say about it. Attack each manipulation uh, units like Vertiheel, Miyang, Ajir that knock her turn order out of sync make her skill 3 vers virtually useless. So she is kind of at the mercy of G3 mindset, right? She's at the mercy of attack gauge. So if it messes up, she needs to kind of as, as, like, if you think about it from a Viva Chell owner's mindset, you're like, okay, I gotta have this specific situation where I switch the attack gauge. It's not just, like, decrease the HP completely. You gotta make sure, like, you decrease the attack gauge and the HP, and, like, switch them, right? So if there's no great opportunity to switch them, then it kind of makes her not that great. So attack gauge manipulation is really strong. That's crazy. So that's a better way of countering her than I would have had, which I really, I really like. I really, I, I always like learning new things as well. Good old Artemio. No complaints here. Uh, got my little alt account sitting at a solid C1. Just gonna sit there for the rest of the season, collect my little, what is it, a little 
kind of spiky wings kind of thing. Trans, not transmog, wings? It's wings, spiky, spiky wings. Anyway, collect my spiky wings this season uh, on my alt. Uh, okay, why? Free turn, strip, and stun despair. Stun on despair, right? Um, anytime opponent crits, many RTA units generally built with high crit rate. Like, everything's built with high crit rate. Uh, very hard to kill and DPS based on tankies. Personally, when I'm fighting these on my main against these, uh, I don't have as much of a problem because I'm just used to using it on my alt so that I know kind of the things that people use to counter me and that I can kind of use some of those things to counter it. Uh, so counters to Sarion, bombs, control, ignore defense, nuke. A lot of times if you can get some Rikas in the mix against the Artemiels, it's pretty brutal, right? But they, a lot of times uh, uh, also, Artemiel owners will bring in multiple sources of immunity, immunity cleanse kind of things. Uh, you do also see them sometimes with uh, things like Amelia as well. So, uh, let's see what they had to say. Make it a Bud's Thoughts. In addition to it, everything you mentioned, it's easy to rune, so it's... Yeah, that's exactly why I am C1 on my alt account, because it's easy to rune. So stats are insane. It doesn't need speed. Correct. Uh, well, obviously he's correct. But it, he really doesn't need that much speed. He gets free turns. Uh, everything else you mentioned is important. Two counters, everything's fine, except ignore defense nukes since those monsters are generally too squishy. It's true. If he gets a couple uh, a couple procs in, then... I mean, if, if they can one-shot kill him, though, they can work. But um, if they can't one-shot him, and he comes back and he heals himself, then they're kind of at the mercy of uh, him getting wrecked. Uh, CR, I, I, I like against it, but a lot of times the Artemil owners will bring in the immunity, which makes it uh, rough, right? Um, Hellstarcher thoughts. Ethna Garo Ciara deny him turns. Garo's kind of one of those interesting picks. It's like one of those ladder picks that it's like the, the, the later picks where if you don't have multi-hits, you're like, how am I going to deal with this Garo? You got like all this OP stuff and it's like Garo comes in, you're like, Crap, I don't have multi-hits. But a lot of the meta right now is like Frey and Ajir Vertiheal, so you have the multi-hits, so you don't see them as much. But if you're picking it against, like, Artemil Ragdoll, Garo could be pretty cool. I've seen Garo take out some Artemil Ragdoll teams. It's pretty crazy when it happens, but, um, yeah. Ethna Garrosiar. I'm surprised that you said Ethna, though. Uh, Ethna Garrosiar, deny him turns, kill off his team, leave him last if needed, and then go for the kill. But he gets all those turns in the meantime. Uh, some people use Feng Yen against him for consistent defense break and can 1v1 win versus Artemiel. So he's kind of like going, uh, he's kind of going for the approach of kill everything else first and just let him get the free hits in and hope he doesn't like strip stun everything. So. Oh, Ragdoll. Oh, God, he's such a tremendous pay. To be honest, I find him scarier to deal with than the Artemiel. Like, I'm okay dealing with the Artemiel. The ragdoll, though, I, oh, I like, ban. How fast can I ban this unit? Uh, why? Massive turn cycling. Anytime an opponent crits, many RTA units generally built for the same thing as Artemiel, kind of. Uh, generally built with high crit rate. Additional turns in a turn-based game is a huge advantage. Same reason Verti Heal is so good. Same reason so many different things are good that turn cycle and get additional turns. He's king of turn cycle, get additional turns. Well, he's one of one of the kings. Uh, counters control like Hathor, Tessarion, Molonga. Tessarion is a lot of uh, is really good against a lot of these units, except that generally when they people are bringing these crazy like Dark Knight fives in, uh, especially the tankier turn two uh, reactionary units like Artemiel Ragdoll, they're bringing like immunity sources too. So not really. I mean, you could strip into Tessarion, but yeah, it's kind of hard to use the Tessarion unless you like open and Tessarion and then nuke him down. Um, but anyway, Molong Akaris because they do just straight HP based damage without critting. Uh, Rika with a low crit rate. I know Baryon was using Rika with a very low crit rate for uh, for RTA in certain situations. Not this season, but uh, previous season. Uh, Bulwark, I actually like against, well I don't use him. I don't have him. But uh, also, asking politely to stop increasing attack age is a nice counter to the Ragdoll as well. I don't know if anyone tried that. It might work. It might work. Anyway, uh, let's see what Make It A Bud had to say. Uh, in addition to everything you mentioned, it is a 15% attack, 15 attack age per crit on any unit of the team. Massive counter to AoE. And there's a lot of good AoE units, right? 
like if you bring a water monkey versus ragdoll you're basically just handing them the win uh also messes up turn orders between opponent and you so i cannot cc the ragdoll team reliably counters exactly what you mentioned um let's say let's see what hell archer had to say single target burst such as molong and garrow most can't proc garrow can solo um verti well yeah most people will use him on uh i've seen vampire uh at, and also some vampire nemesis which is kind of like brutal against the uh molongs molong comes in it's like okay skill three and then ragdoll's like oh really because i'm getting a turn now and i'm gonna ignore defense on you heal all that uh it's yeah it's dangerous uh vertiheal actually counters ragdoll atb he boosts more than ragdoll gains so that's one thing and that's uh multiple multiple people have actually brought this up that vertiheal is still a good um even though he crits to gain his attack age he's still a good ragdoll counter because he will still increase the attack age uh as well Number one highest win rate unit. I feel like this is skewed data though. How much is how to play the number one uh, RTA player this season? How much is their their gameplay impacting this list? I want to know because I feel like I know they pick this first every single match. So I want to know how much that's actually impacting it. But the Pater though is a phenomenal. They're not the only one using this Pater. Uh, Pater is a phenomenal unit because so many people using uh, Gany Hathor stuff, right? It's a hard counter to the Gany Hathor thing. 64.15% win rate is pretty big. So that means he's only losing 35.85% uh, of the time. Right? Is my head math correct? Probably not. Okay, why? AoE cleanse immunity. It's very similar to something like um, the Amelia. Right? Very similar to the Amelia. Uh, Self-cleanse passive is the difference though. AoE provoke plus a stun on skill 1. Uh, he is kind of very similar to Amelia, aside from the fact that he self-cleanses his, uh, his debuffs um, on his turn as a passive. Uh, counters, ignored defense, but I mean, I really feel like the Ragdolls actually should be the, should be the number one. It's just so many people in high level using, using Hathor, 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 like, the, non-stop, that, that's why his win rate is uh, so high. Um, but counters ignore defense, strip defense, break into burst damage, Daphnis, Lauren, but I put the Bajira in there. I know Bajira's not a thing that you like using all the Bajira all the time. Bajira's underrated unit though, guys. I gotta say, Bajira's an underrated unit. He strips defense breaks and does big burst damage. And he's tanky. He's not a squishy pants. He's tanky too. And he reduces attack age with two of his skills. Bajir! And he's easy to skip. Whatever. Bagel loves his Bajir. But anyway, I'm, maybe I'm alone on that. Anyway, um, the basic concept is there. Uh, let's see what uh, Thompson... Not Yeah, that, actually, that is, that is what... Haha, <laughs> I was right. Let's see what Thompson has to say. Um, this is basically just overall what he had to say. He didn't have too much to say on a lot of stuff. He was like, yeah, most of it makes sense. Uh, Ragdoll Armail, non-critting monsters, again like Molong, again like Rika, things like that, that do damage without having to crit. Uh, Pater, cooldown reset, uh, works for him, um, or, cause if he has the cooldown reset, he's still got his passive, but he's not gonna be able to, uh, do immunity. Um, Artemiel heal block, I don't know about the heal, like, I'm less worried about the heal block, and more worried about all those free hits he's taken. Um, overall control and outspeed is the counter to half this stuff, though, uh, is what he was saying. Uh, the way he likes to think about it. And then uh, Hell's Archer's thoughts on Pater. Only reason Pater has such a high win rate is because a lot of people use Hathor. Else he's pretty easy to just kill, burst down. Resetting him makes him utterly useless. Makes it, I feel like a lot of, a lot of the time we, we kind of see the same things from the same standpoint. It's like, okay, that's how to counter him. Uh, it would counter these whatever things. Uh... Negative Bud said, counters are basically high damage, turn cycling, vertiheal, control the pater with attack age manipulation like a jeer. Which he does like to use a lot of the, uh, a lot of vertiheal and jeer stuff. Vertiheal, a jeer, Gany, Hathor, etc, etc, etc. So. Alright guys, those are the top 10 highest win rate units in RTA. What are your thoughts below? Again, the data is all taken from rtapicks.info. Uh, so it's not like the matches that I saw and I collected the data, it's like they have a whole thing, they have a whole collection system where they get all the data from all the different uh, RTA matches. 
Um, so that's based on their data collection, not my opinion, not anyone's opinion. It's just win rate from data collected over Guardian players uh, this season. So that's, that's the data. It's not an opinion list. It's just that's the data. And then more of our opinions as to like why they're good and also what are good picks against them. So anyway, uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully we see a different meta. It wasn't even supposed to be all light dark nat fives. It really was. It was just these just happened to be all light dark nat fives. Pay to win, pay to win game. I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm just. This just happened to all be light dark nat fives. Uh, so shocking, so shocking. Anyway, guys, uh, hope you enjoyed it. That's it for this one. Again, thank you to uh, Make It A Bud, uh, Thompson, and Hell's Archer as well. I will link their Twitches and their stuff in the description or whatever. And I will see you guys, as always, in the next one.